Thank you all for joining. Uh, what is the sloka that we, we covered last week? 46-47. Okay. Okay. Please go ahead. <clears throat> Chapter 18. Moksha Sanyasa Yoga Sloka 46 Yata Pravrutir Bhutanam Yena Sarva Midam Tatam Swakarmana Tamab Yadcha Siddim Vindati Manavaha Jeshi Manarana Chapter 18 Sloka 46 Summary Lord Krishna said, a person acquires liberation by performing one's own duty as a worship of that one, that one from whom activity of all beings is happening and by whom this entire universe is pervaded. Yes, <clears throat> I was just reading the meaning, and eh? I mean, just before this uh, this thing. Sure. Uh, then, uh, so either he does paradharma or swadharma, uh, as long as you do that as a service to God. Right? Um, yeah. uh, this, rather, I mean, if you go to the nothing next page, right? The next page. Is it right? I think, I think, I mean, Swadharma, I always do Swadharma. Paradharma means here you give an example where going for meditation. Yeah. Uh, right? Leaving the farmer, leaving is farming because meditation is easy. Uh, he thinks that it's easy, but once you go to meditation, he can't keep his mind, right? I think thinking about everything else. So that's why he should, he should come back to his original uh, Swadharma. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have to do um, our duty. Um, instead of doing someone else's duty or some other duty that is that we are not fit for. Not fit for yeah. Okay, I mean, we are fit for one duty. We do that duty, and uh, we don't have to do someone some other duty that we are not fit for, thinking that that will give us the result that we want. Okay. Right? I mean, what is the reason for us to go there and uh, uh, you know do the meditation? Uh, 
we we are probably thinking that oh okay doing the meditation will lead me to the uh, success right uh, to siddhi um, but it doesn't that's what lord krishna is saying you, we will not be able to perform that uh, activity uh, mm-hmm. because we are not fit for that mm-hmm. so it is better to do the duty that we are fit for that is our own duty okay okay i mean our own duty is karma yoga okay yeah. if we are not i mean we would know uh, we would know whether we are fit for the you know gnana yoga um right yeah okay. so that is something that uh, we would be fit for i mean that is uh, that will be known to the person who who is fit for that but uh, if uh, we think that that is easy and go then it is not it is not that just uh, you know sitting um, you know in a secluded place and doing meditation is uh, i know is easy so i can do it yeah actually it is even difficult than what we think um, so we will not be able to reach our uh, goal uh, by doing something that we are not fit for yeah. so it is not the it is not uh, whether we are doing the um, brahmana duty or kshatriya duty uh, or, so, exactly yeah. yeah so that is so that is different yeah so we are talking all these four um, classes categories of um, uh, people right yeah. all of them come under the karma yoga and yeah. all the duties of uh, yeah. each one of us yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. we do what is assigned to us or what is what we are fit for in one of these categories yeah it is better than doing out, going outside this category and then doing it yes um so the um so basically there is a lot of uh, you know some concern saying oh why is lord krishna saying these four categories of people i mean that came up last week right Mm-hmm. um so i just want to repeat that unless lord krishna says that there are four categories and there are duties assigned to each of these categories those duties are based on the inner qualities that are generated based on uh, the vasanas um, mm-hmm. you know so but however or but uh, whatever duty we do it will uh, lead to uh, liberation so if uh, if lord krishna had explained the, had not explained this then there could be there could be an understanding that uh, you know brahmana duty is higher than kshatriya duty that is higher than uh, vaishya yeah. duty than higher than a shudra duty that is how people will treat it right yeah. um so he explicitly said oh there are these four categories and there are duties assigned to these four categories not not because one is higher other one is lower it is only because uh, whatever uh, uh duty is um naturally fit for the for the pe- uh, kind of people that are born into those categories yeah. right so because uh, it is uh, tied to the previous shlokas where he said that if you are satvik you will take birth as a in a satvik janma mm-hmm. if you are rajasik you will take birth in a rajasik janma right a mm-hmm. uh, next a uh, next birth so yeah. so one who is uh, taking birth in a satvik janma satvik uh, with satvik inherent nature for them these are the satvik activities that naturally come to us so they um, come to them so they will be able to do them compared to uh, you know assigning a rajasik or tamasik duty to them right same way for if i am if i am rajasik uh, in my janma this janma uh, rajasik dominance at the time of leaving uh, this uh, this body mm-hmm. then i tend to take a body that is rajasik that is what is given in the previous uh, chapters right so when i take birth in that uh, body which is rajasik inherent which is having rajasik inherent nature for that body 
taking uh, a duty that is sattvic or tamasic will become difficult mm -hmm. but rajasic duty will be naturally so coming yeah. to it right so so um doing whatever is assigned like uh, the rajasic duty is you know kshatriya duty uh, yeah you know let's uh, do the kshatriya duty you don't you don't have to say oh i have to become uh, uh, i have to take up the duty of some you know some other uh, category of because that only those duties are going to give me liberation no any duty will give will lead us to liberation provided provided uh, it is done um, you know karma yoga uh, as worship to god god yeah as as a worship to paramatma so whether it is coding activity whether it is farming activity whether it is uh, business whether it is uh, becoming a soldier or a ruler or a priest all are equal when they are all done as service to god and they are all inferior if they are not service to god none of them will lead you know, you know even being a priest will not lead to liberation if it is not done with as service to god hmm. it is like i am great i am doing this this is uh, you know you know my activity because of my activity i am going to get liberation if that is the intention of a priest then it will not uh, lead to liberation even it is directly performing uh services to paramatma if if the activity does not have this service uh, to paramatma attitude then it will not lead to paramatma so uh i mean uh, just listening to sri swami ji um so lord sri rama right lord sri rama is a avatar of paramatma uh, so typically when we see god we will get liberated or when we praise god we will get liberated that's what we think right but how about dasharatha dasharatha you know dasharatha san rama was dasharatha san mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, dasharatha was there from day one and he took care of rama did all the activities needed for rama he loved rama so much um so one would think that oh he would get liberation isn't it yeah but but dasharatha didn't get liberation yeah a uh, lot of people around krishna who saw krishna they also did service to krishna did not get liberation mm -hmm. so it is not the activity of serving to god okay that will give you liberation it is the attitude with which we do it so so if you do it with a selfish motive i am let's say i'm, I'm going to uh, pray to god thinking that i am doing it this is for my benefit you know i'm going to get some result and you know, god is going to give me some result yeah we may, we'll get some result i mean we'll be uh, materialistically happy it's not that god is not going to give anything to us he is the one who is going to give everything to us so but it will not lead us to the self realization or godly god realization that we want right so all these activities will be successful in a materialistic sense if we don't uh, do it as uh, worship to god if we do it as worship to god then we will get the uh we will be on the path towards liberation the higher goal right so there should not be any uh um yeah question about oh you know am i going to get liberation or not i'm just doing this activity um, and uh, so as long as we do any activity um with a service to god he will get um so typically when we uh, when we 
um, you know, do the volunteer work, right? In a temple, for example, let us say. Mm -hmm. So people will say, oh, okay, I want to take up uh, the volunteer, uh, you know, I want to make garlands uh, for, the, uh, Param for Paramatma. Okay. Uh, so and that is the, the closest that one, you know, let us say, one can get to Paramatma. Uh, or directly serving, you know, doing the Abhishek come to God or something like that. And the least preferred is uh, one who uh, takes care of the shoes. Shoes, cleaning. Yeah. cleaning. Cleaning the restrooms. Cleaning restrooms. So they are totally outside somewhere. <laughs> you know, they are not even, uh, uh, you know, near the event, let us say, the Kalyanam is happening or Abhishekam is happening. Um you know, or some inauguration is happening, praying to Paramatma, and, uh, you know, great people are coming and uh, they're doing a unique activity, let us say. But uh, there are some people who are serving uh, the devotees who are coming and uh, taking care of their shoes. Now, what would be the attitude of those people? <laughs> I wish I was doing, I was inside, I, I would have been seeing Paramatma, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the uh, attitude of the people who are directly in front of the Paramatma, they'll say, oh, I'm so happy, I'm so lucky, I'm doing this one. Uh, so both of them, uh, if they miss that, the, the uh, I am doing this as service to God, whatever activity I'm doing is for his you know, it is his wish, it is his will, and doing it to please him, not for, to please myself, mm. right? And uh, I'm doing it as service to God. If uh, you know, if it, if both do the same thing, right? Both will get the same result. One who is inside directly serving Paramatma, and one who is just taking care of shoes outside. So. Uh, but uh, because we have, uh, because of our ignorance, we think that uh, one who is inside uh, directly serving Paramatma is closer to God. And uh, one who is uh, taking care of the shoes is not. And somehow is cursed or something like that. So, which is not really the case. That is what the equality principle is. Like uh, God treats each everyone equally as long as they're doing their duty as worship to god right. okay I mean, some people say, oh, okay. Now the, the other argument is that, okay, I'm pro, I'm doing service. Okay. Right. Okay. Selfless service, selfless. I mean, I'm uh, doing the volunteer work, selfless service, but you know, is it, is it not good compared to, uh, you know, praying to God? Okay. If I'm doing the selfless service, thinking that uh, you know, I'm selfless, I'm selfless, I'm doing this service. But if I don't do it as uh, worship to God, then it is uh, inferior. I mean, we may get uh, um, we may get to a state where we'll where we will start praying to Paramatma later, but they're missing the point there. Like they are, they, we have to do it as service to God. Okay, um, otherwise, uh, I mean, of course, we, we learned in previous chapters that uh, they will be succumbing to the nature, nature. like they, somebody comes and uh, shouts at them immediately, they will, they will lose their peace. Okay, um, they will be under the influence of this nature. If they do not... Uh, if they do not uh, uh, do it as service to God, mm, what is the word? Karma hmm? 
yeah karma phala tyaga so again uh, just doing it um, you know without expecting result but the result has to be offered to god um, so then god, if god is missing then they are going to be under the influence of this nature that is what uh, we learn right uh, if uh, we do not pray to paramatma and we do not offer our results to paramatma if we do not recognize that paramatma is the one who is enabling us to do any activity if we do not realize that paramatma is pervading this entire universe and uh, if you do not realize that whatever we are doing i'm doing it as service to god then we will be influenced by the nature so we will be affected by the rajasik and tamasik uh, you know influences on us so we may be getting the desires we may be getting uh, uh, krodha and all this uh, you know the anger rage we will be getting attached we will be um, uh becoming lazy we will you know all those so all, all those uh, will be affecting us if we do not surrender to paramatma that's the word that i was looking for if we do not surrender to paramatma do it as service to god then we will be under the influence of the nature it is not it is uh, not possible for us to be not influenced by the nature by ourselves that is the thing that is a key there i mean if i don't like i don't pray to god but i'm doing everything right uh is uh, the argument somebody makes so i'm better than someone who prays to god but does some bad activities uh of course doing praying to god but doing bad activities is not uh, of course not good they are not on the path towards liberation um uh, but the one who is uh, doing activities uh, without praying to god uh, they are unfortunately putting them zeros under the influence of uh, rajasik and tamasik qualities of the nature because we we will be affected by them it is not possible for us to get rid of them right to the point of professor garu are there case studies and i think i mean like you said the the sarada did not get um because i think he did all the 100 things right but this one thing he did not do because yeah of- yeah the one thing that he did not do was he did not realize uh, uh whatever he is doing is service to god yeah. he, he only felt happy i am happy for my happiness right so if you are doing it uh, as a service to god it is not your happiness that is important yeah right i mean happiness or something yeah yeah i mean i am able to serve him uh, of course his father so it is difficult to you know you can argue saying how can a father be uh, act, you know acting as if he is doing service to god um, but it, it is possible like whenever we even that's why i was saying right like uh, even washing dishes you know cooking everything we have to do it as service to god now always god uh, always a service to god if you do it then every activity is uh, putting us on path to to liberation doesn't matter whether you are doing the uh, puja um of course if you are doing the uh, puja right if you are doing the worship directly to paramatma there is a lesser chance of uh, you thinking of other things right i mean you are not affected by other things at that moment if you i mean there's a lesser chance of course you can be uh, meditating think of meditating sitting uh, and then praying to parmatma and then the mind van you know goes all over the place so then again there is, it's no use but if if we are directly doing the activity to parmatma then uh, we are under the protection like it's like uh, we are channeling our, ourselves so uh, we will be um, under less influence of uh, the um, nature okay but still if we we have to do any activity as service to god that's a given so and every any activity that is done as service to god is uh, is equal uh, to any other activity as done as service to god and all uh, all will be on the path towards liberation who who do this right so it doesn't matter what service activity it is yeah 
very true and i mean that's what they say right so uh, every line of code you do it with a feeling you are putting a flower at the feet of the god <laughs> and you know and then one of the stories that i one of, one time i heard the swami ji was going through a check in um uh-huh. the scanning right so <laughs> security and the security person said uh, swami ji um you have the t- ability to you are so lucky you are able to pray the god all day long and you are always in spiritual practices and then uh, swami ji said uh, you know whenever you scan a person in mentally you put a flower at the feet of the god so then you would see how how much time you can actually spend praying god <laughs> so yeah yeah i think when we integrate our activity with the mental attitude that we are doing it for the god then it's uh, feeling, with yeah. that feeling right? yeah. oh yeah yeah and uh, exactly and we become more efficient actually yeah yeah see suppose you know you start some new project or something important is given to us i mean immediately the ego comes um so of course that's natural but you know as we go along when we understand this that can be minimized and we start thinking okay i will do it as my duty a service to god um yeah that's a very powerful knowledge i would say That's good, Andy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we'll move to 47. Yeah, I can go ahead. Ah, Madhu, you want to go ahead? Yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah. Chapter 18, Moksha Sanyasa Yoga, Sloka 47. Shreyan Sarvadharmo Vigunaha Paradharma Sadharmo Vigunaha ಶ್ರೇಯಾನ್ ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮೋ ವಿಗುಣ ಪರಧರ್ಮಾತ್ ಸ್ವನುಷ್ಠಿ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ನಿಯತ ಕರ್ಮ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಮನ್ನಾರಾಯಣ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಏಟೀನ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಸಮ್ಮರಿ ಲಾಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೆಡ್ one's own dharma that is lacking qualities that are present in others is better than the other's dharma that is sometimes uh, well practiced one who performs work appointed determined by own one's own nature does not attain sin means that guy does not enter into samsara jai shri manan jai shri manan very good any questions on this one Yeah, I think we covered, uh, uh, like in the previous discussion, uh, the same thing. So uh, here Swadharma is, um, is uh, Karma Yoga and Paradharma is anything that is not Karma Yoga. Okay, um, that is Nana Yoga. So what he's saying is that even though you are doing the activities, uh, which appear inferior, which are painful, which seem to give us, uh, you know, I mean, just like I was exp- uh, explaining, right? Like one, we are, one who is uh, uh, taking care of the shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the, we, uh, it appears to us it is not having the qualities that we would want, you know. With our ignorance, we will be thinking that way. So, but oh, Lord Krishna is making it very clear that no matter what we do, if you do it as service to god uh, we will uh, uh, be on the path towards liberation and we will not be getting the sin if we do other activities but we are not able to do it properly we will be getting sick so 
so it is uh, mm-hmm. other activities in the sense like uh, you know we want to um you know say we are not eligible or we are not fit to do the jnana yoga let us say or you know uh, dhyana yoga abhyasa you know that higher levels mm-hmm. uh, but we uh, we try to do it um thinking that we will be able to do it then we will be getting more sin than what we would have got by performing our own duty so there is no use of doing that unless we are capable or unless we are fit to do those activities Okay. Any questions, Annie? No, sir. No, no. Thank you. No. Okay, we'll start with 48. We'll start with the fail. Om. ಅಸ್ಮತ್ಕುರುಭ್ಯ ನಮಃ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ರಕ್ಷತ ನೋ ಜಗತ್ರಯ ಗುರು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನಮಸ್ಯಾಮ್ಯಹಂ ಕೃಷ್ಣೇ ನಾಮರಸತ್ರವೋ ವಿಹತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದೇವ ಸಮುತ್ಥಿ ಜಗದಿದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದಾಸೋಸ್ಮ್ಯಹಂ ಕೃಷ್ಣೇ ತಿಷ್ಠತಿ ಸರ್ವೇತದಖಿಲ ಏ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸಂರಕ್ಷ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಸಹಜ ಕರ್ಮ ಕೌಂತೆಯ ಸದೋಷಿ ನತ್ಯಜೇತ್ ಸರ್ವಾರಂಭಿ ದೋಷೇನಾಗ್ನಿರ್ವಾ so lord krishna is saying <coughs> so uh, swadharma is uh, better than paradharma um <clears throat> so paradharma uh, that is done sometimes better uh, you know better than swadharma but still the performing swadharma is better because we are fit to do that okay so lord krishna is saying sahajam karma sadosham api natyajet so uh, kauntaya o oh, arjuna um sahajam karma the work that is born from one's own nature what is our sahajam like our um, you know um, whatever uh is the activity which is born from our nature our nature is typically we are born to do activity right our body has to survive so we need to do the activities so karma yoga is sahajam for us so sahajam karma sadosham api natyajet okay should not be given up even even uh, though it is filled with pains sadosham dosham means uh, pains um so even though it is filled with pains we should not give it up 
okay so here dosham is not um, Sa- regular Sa- meaning <laughs> yeah dosham has uh, several meanings so um, mm-hmm. so it is uh, the we think it is painful okay dosha mm-hmm. is uh, you know the that uh, something you no know, we another meaning is sins right sin sinful something wrong uh, or something yeah something wrong uh, you know but see it is uh, uh, painful for us it is going to result in pains mm mm-hmm. mhm something that is not done right it is going to result i mean something that is not done in done right means like we are when we do any activity we don't expect any pains uh, you know right mm-hmm. um so so but every activity is actually um, painful that's what he is saying lord krishna mm-hmm. is saying so we we think that something is painful and don't do it right mm-hmm. so i think uh, you know in doing my duty is painful let me not do it okay mm-hmm. so that is the attitude that we have but every so that's what he is saying lord krishna is saying sarvarambhahi doshena um so all works are covered with pains okay sarva mm-hmm. aramba anything that started so all works avrutah and they are covered with doshena with pains okay mm-hmm. okay and uh, he is giving um, uh, an an example dhumena agnihi avrutah eva so like like um fire is covered with smoke mm. okay um so let us uh, i mean there are some references that uh, uh, i gave here so sahajam karma work that is born from one's own nature um to understand this so what is that i mean what is that uh, sahajam karma paras so lord lord krishna is saying in the 13th chapter uh, 14th shloka atma by nature is devoid of the three gunas sattva rajas and tamas and yet it is the enjoyer of the gunas in the embodied state okay um in 20th shloka lord krishna said prakriti uh, a material nature is said to be responsible for the actions of the body and the senses okay and 21 he said having seated in prakriti purusha that is atma experiences qualities born of prakriti attachment to the qualities of prakriti and their effects such as pleasures and pains is the cause of births in good and evil bodies of this purusha in 14th chapter 5th shloka sattva rajas and tamas qualities that are born from prakriti bind the immutable self who is residing in the body and uh, 14th chapter 19th shloka when one of uh, true vision when one who is having true vision established in sattva perceives no agent of action other than other than the gunas and knows that the atma is superior to gunas that one attains my state lord krishna is saying okay um so and then uh, in uh, 20th uh, shloka he is saying after uh, transcending these uh, three uh, qualities manifested in the body purusha the embodied self is liberated okay in the uh, 18th chapter 40th shloka no being exists on this earth or in heaven that is freed by three gunas born from prakriti um then in third chapter fifth shloka 
no one ever stays inactive even for a second because everyone is involuntarily pushed into action by the gunas born from the prakriti third chapter 27 sloka all kinds of karmas that are being done are by the three gunas of the nature now all these are like related uh, one supporting the other so basically atma is not responsible for the activities uh, but atma is the one who is uh, experiencing the activities are because of the influence of the gunas gunas are responsible attachment to the gunas is causing the uh, uh, birth uh, you know next birth so key here is no one uh, ever stays inactive even for a second because everyone is involuntarily pushed into action by the gunas born from the prakriti and uh, the here it says that uh, um, no one is uh, free free from these three gunas everyone is affected by these three gunas so when these three gunas are acting on the body the body is made up of the nature we are it is acting uh so the body inherently having these three gunas and it is influenced by the three gunas from the nature okay um so the atma is also getting influenced and we are doing the the body is doing the activity right so no so it cannot uh, sit idle it cannot be uh, inactive the body cannot be inactive right because always it is uh, getting influenced from outside so those three gunas will influence uh, the body to act so that that's why karma yoga uh, performing the activity is natural natural for us and so we have to do the activity as karma yoga i mean karma it's not like karma yoga is natural for us karma is act, na, natural for us so that's why karma yoga is uh, uh prescribed for us okay um so basically not free from their swabhava guna uh, that is uh, dominant inherent quality because we are taking birth and then you know carrying the qualities whatever is the predominant quality from our previous birth we are carrying it to the next birth so there is some inherent quality in us that will uh, that will instigate that will uh, uh, motivate motivate us to take some actions right if someone is born with a rajasic quality dominant quality then they will tend to be rajasic in this birth so it is going to act when it's not possible to simply suppress that so thinking that oh, okay i can get rid of the rajasic activity and uh, do something else is uh, is not possible because that is going to act okay so they have to turn it towards paramatma so do the activity which is which is uh, in line with the rajasic quality but do it as uh, do it as service to paramatma so let us say i, I have rajasic quality i become uh, uh, let us say for example soldier like in case of arjuna uh, he Uh, he can be the warrior but do it as service to god you know he it is you know i'm not you know fighting for my own sake mm-hmm. i'm not uh, fighting for my own happiness okay my own possessions i am the one who is fighting instead of thinking that way they can do it as service to god so then uh, they are on the path towards liberation even though they are doing the rajasic activity so and uh, not free from the effect of the three gunas of the prakriti so we are not free you know we have we are always under the influence of the three gunas always takes up some work um under the influence of the gunas so we always do something so that's why performing karma is natural for anyone who takes birth the lord krishna explained earlier karma must be performed as karma yoga a service to god okay so that is uh, swabhava um sahajam karma <coughs> sorry sahajam karma so we, we we should not give our uh, whatever is natural 
for us, natural activity that is uh, given to us, right? That should not be given up. Uh, and uh, even though that is filled with pains, you know, a soldier is fighting, uh, that is uh, filled with pains. Now, not only that, we, uh, you know, he is, for example, in case of Arjuna, he is fighting his own guru, his own uh, grandfather, uh, great grandfather. So he, he is, uh, it appears to him that he is going to com commit sin by doing that. But if it is his duty, he should do it without having any questions about, oh, am I going to get any sins? If I do my duty properly as service to God, I will not get any sins. Okay. Uh, so, another, then a few more uh, slokas from previous chapters. So, karma yoga must not be given up. You know, they, Lord Krishna gave reasons earlier. I mean, 18th chapter is like a summary, summarizing a lot of slokas that were given in the previous chapters. Lord Krishna said uh, so many things in the previous chapters. In 18th chapter, is uh, <clears throat> kind of uh, giving a quick summary. So this one particular sloka is now summarizing uh, several slokas that were uh, given earlier. So one um, in uh, chapter three, uh, sloka four, Lord Krishna said, one does not attain nice karmyam, freedom from karma, that is uh, jnana yoga, from not starting one's duties or from giving up one's duties in the middle. You, you know, nice karma, uh, you know, just, okay, freedom from activity. How can I do get freedom from activity? Just by, we think uh, I just stop doing it, right? But one does not get that uh, freedom from karma just by giving up or uh, not starting or giving up in the middle. Why? Because one who controls, the, uh, so they continue, they continue to think about that. So the mind is not in our, in our control. So we may stop it with our, you know, with our senses, right? We can withdraw our senses, but our mind still keeps uh, thinking about those activities. In uh, Sloka 6, uh, he said, uh, one who controls the karmendriyas, organs of action, but continues to think in the, uh, in the mind about the sense objects, is called a mithyacharaha, uh, is hypocrite. Okay, that means when the mind is not restrained, just giving up the action is not really giving up the action. The mind continues to, continues to think about the sense objects instead of focusing on Atma Jnana. So I can just become a Jnana Yogi uh, by simply giving up the activity or stopping the activities is not true because the mind is not under control. Um, in Sloka 8, he said, uh, uh, Karma Jayaha Hi Akarmanaha. And performing karma one's duties is better than not performing karma and focusing on jnana alone, okay? Because karma is based on the inherent nature we learned. Uh, so it is easy to practice. There is another reason that Lord Krishna explained in Slokas 21, 26. Whatever work and in whatever way a great person puts into practice, other people follow them and do similar work in the same way. Okay, so in 26, he said, one who has Atma Jnana should not cause confusion in people who do not have this knowledge and who can do only karma. So to eliminate the possibility of ignorant giving up the work, the wise engage in action. However, the wise people perform the work as karma yoga uh, inspiring the ignorant to convert their work to karma yoga. So basically, if even if I'm capable of uh, uh, or fit to perform nana yoga, 
okay i have the atma gnanam and i don't have to uh, practice uh, my uh, you know assigned duties uh still i have to perform the duties because other people will try to emulate me okay so there are two reasons one is it is easy for me because uh i know my body is made up of five elements of nature and it is always under the influence of the three gunas and it will always instigate me to act so that is naturally coming to us so karma is a natural thing natural thing for us the second thing is that even if uh, oh, okay i'm under uh, i completely control my senses and my mind and intellect uh, so i am uh, i don't have to do my um, karma yoga uh, practice practices but still i have to do because other people are looking at me okay so uh, and in uh, shloka 8 he said livelihood will not be earned by uh, by you if you become inactive so uh, giving up actions is not entirely feasible as long as we live you know even a atma uh, atma gnana at nana yogi uh, they have to live also they have to eat they have to survive um, so they they need to do activities as well so any activity we do we have to follow the karma yoga principles so we cannot give it up uh so one may ask a question i am willing to work but it requires great effort and it is filled with physical and mental pains i am intelligent and do not want these pains so i will try to refrain from these works okay so that is what we we kind of think right i you know it is filled with pains i don't want to do it so for that reason you know as people may think this way lord krishna is immediately correcting us saying we should not give up the karma yoga even though it is filled with pains he clarified that all works okay any work you know whether it is part of karma yoga gnana in a, any activity that is leading to uh, gnana yoga or any activity that is part of karma yoga practices any work um is filled with pains like the smoke envelops the fire always okay so it's like a, uh, the pain is covering pain is always there for any work like smoke is always there for a fire so there is no use in trying to find another yoga just to reduce the efforts of pains Uh, we are better better of performing karma yoga itself that's what lord krishna is saying so i mean don't don't uh, say a thing that oh okay some other uh, you know work is uh, having less pains Easy. or or will give me less sins and that's why i should do it don't think that way uh, because we will fail basically and uh even if he i mean he gave the example that you we have to live even though we have we can we are capable of gnana yoga we have to live and other people are looking towards us so it's better for us to uh to perform karma, karma yoga and uh, and um he gave an example of himself you know lord krishna said i don't have to really do all these activities you know because yeah i'm above all these things there's nothing else for me to do in this world but still i do it so he was the one who was driving the chariot right so uh, he's he's doing the activity uh himself so he is setting an example that um, even lord krishna is performing his duties any questions on this are you able to hear me clearly i'm, I'm sorry is it clear yes sir yes, 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 yes. very able to hear no no we were okay. okay okay uh we will want to sloka 49 
Sloka 49. Asatta buddhi sarvatra. Asatta buddhi sarvatra. Jitatma vigatas pruhaha. Jitatma vigatas pruhaha. Naish karmya siddhim paramam. Naish karmya siddhim paramam. Sanyase nadhigat. Chati Sanya Asakta buddhi hi. Um, buddhi is intellect. Asakta mm -hmm. is unattached or detached. Okay. So one who has detached intellect, unattached intellect, um, sarvatra, everywhere. Okay. I mean, uh, unattached or detached intellect everywhere in everything okay in actions in results you know everywhere it's not like i have uh, i have detachment only in one part you know i can only uh, have detached uh, detachment in my office work and not <laughs> uh, in other work it's not like that so everywhere uh, have the detached intellect we'll see what it is um, and then Jita Atma. So he's uh, talking about uh, uh, kind of people here. Okay. So one who is having detached intellect everywhere, Jita Atma, one who has conquered mind. Atma here is mind. Jita Atma is one who has conquered the mind. Okay. Conquered mind means um, they are we are able to go above these dualities, you know, not affected by the dualities. When it's a dualities, that is heat and cold, pleasure and pain, honor, dishonor, you know, love, hate, you know, these, I mean, uh, we, our mind is always uh, uh, giving us, you know, it is analyzing the senses, you know, the sensory inputs and then saying it is, uh, for example, heat or cold, like when, when we touch something, uh, other skin, uh, sensory organ, it is going to tell us whether it is, uh, uh, um, whether it is uh, hot or cold. I mean, sorry, skin is just giving us the temperature and we our mind processes it and then says it is uh, hot for us or cold for us. For somebody else, the same temperature could be, you know, different. They, they could say it is hot for them, but we could say it is cold for us, right? So the mind is the one which is uh, differentiating uh, the, you know, uh, whether it is uh, hot or cold. Somebody uh, scolds us. Okay, and our mind will say, oh, this person is scolding. For some people, it is, you know, it doesn't matter for them. You know, they're not worried about it. Um, the, you know, success or failure. These are all the dualities that we have, you know. So, Jitatma, one who has conquered the mind, is not affected by these dualities. Okay. Um, Vigatas Pruhaha, one who is free from craving okay um, longing you know having one who is free from desires okay mm -hmm. um, so that one you know one who has these characteristics okay 
such a person adhigachati on the and they attain or uh, attains one attains uh, paramam naiskarnya siddhim naiskarnya siddhim paramam so supreme state of being siddhim siddhi is uh, uh, success okay naiskarnya siddhim is uh, uh, free naiskarnya we said uh, free of karma right okay state of being free from all activities that is what it says one who attains uh, a success in being free from all activities okay that is uh, uh, that is the state of dhyana meditation okay so they they may be doing the work but they are free from the uh, from the influence of the senses okay they are uh, they are in the meditative state okay they will only when we have um um these three qualities right these three characteristics one who has these three characteristics they will attain the state of dhyana or meditation state how will they attain sanyasena with sanyasa sanyasa we learned that the uh, threefold renunciation of phala sanga kartrutva right phala sanga kartrutva tyagam is called sanyasam right so one who has uh, renunciated the phala uh, sanga kartrutva with that uh they will attain the meditative state meditation state of uh, meditation so it doesn't mean uh, meditation doesn't mean that one who is sitting and doing right it's like a uh, that nature yeah. of the person like while doing any activity as well yes yeah okay. so they will be able to meditate as well i mean they can sit and then do the meditation yeah, yeah. because their mind is under control mm-hmm. okay and they don't have any desires well, typically what happens is when i when we sit uh, and start doing the meditation mm-hmm. we start thinking about our desires right what we want to do what uh, you know am i going to achieve it or not i mean the some desires will so something that we are attached to something mm-hmm. that we are focused on the attachment is on the sensory objects right so mm-hmm. our attachment will lead to uh, uh, a desire mm-hmm. so uh, we'll be thinking about our desires i mean we call them as goals you know mm-hmm. <laughs> some people call them as desires some people call them as goals uh, mm-hmm. now you know i have a, a goal to uh, build something you know but it is actually a desire so i mean uh, uh, so we we think of uh, those things right when it comes to our mind so one who is free from that they can sit and meditate because their mind can focus on the what is uh, their ultimate goal isn't mm. it not mm-hmm. the desires um because they are not longing for something or craving for something uh, sensory related or once who, whose mind is uh, controlled i mean i'm not affected by what's happening around the world you know i'm not affected by the praise or uh, uh, criticism i'm not affected by hot or cold i'm not affected by um, success failure anything so my mind will be stable right now i can focus again so i can do the meditation imagine if our mind is not focused i mean mind is uh, not uh, having that balance right we will not be able to do the meditation like when we sit uh, um, you know sit somewhere and then start doing the meditation we will keep thinking oh it's cold it is hot immediately or somebody is shouting somebody i mean we are uh, we are always affected by what is happening around okay so the mind will be wandering those uh, and uh, thinking about those uh, extra things but not on the one that is uh, the object of meditation which is uh, atma right mm. uh, so um 
one who has detached intellect they look at the intellect intellect is the judgment ability or uh, you know judgment ability right so um if uh, if i am always uh, um my intellect is for, is because of a uh, desire i mean it is under the influence of the desire it is attached to the desire it will judge me to take action which is in line with the desire okay mm-hmm. so when uh, i have detached intellect my intellect will tell me hey don't do that i'll tell you i mean so if i if i have uh, if i desire to buy a car right i mean desire to enjoy the car my intellect will tell me that uh, do the activity that will give you uh, uh, you know you know the car so that you can enjoy mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Uh, but so my intellect is not telling me to do the meditation right mm-hmm. <laughs> so my intellect is driving my mind my mind drives senses so that is uh, the progression we i think we gave it in the, the explanation so if the intellect is attached to the world not to atma if the intellect is attached to the world worldly pleasures worldly activities you know worldly possessions and everything um it will it will drive my mind to um be focused on the worldly activities or worldly pleasures worldly results and everything so my mind should be detached i'm sorry my intellect should be detached first okay so uh let us look at this one so in the previous shloka lord krishna advised one should not give up the karma yoga that is born of our nature mm. okay so the our nature is being present in this body that is influenced by the senses in the in this uh, shloka 49 lord krishna is giving the next stage after one practices karma yoga okay one attains nice karma siddhim it li- it literally means freedom from karma success so uh, siddhi is success a nice karma is a uh, freedom from karma that means reaching a state where one is not influenced by all activity of the senses a state where one is fit to meditate on atma okay so so who so, will attain yeah, sorry yeah go ahead so yeah i understand sir but um, for example i am doing my job right with all uh, that's an activity mm-hmm. but with all the all these above said the qualities right um full focus am i will i be called as i am uh, medit in a meditative state like you know even for cooking say with the full focus i am performing my cooking um you know with the uh, thinking to service to god and all that with the good qualities you know um, you are in the meditative state yes oh. so if your intellect is detached mm. from the worldly activities okay mm-hmm. <clears throat> if uh, your mind is controlled mm. and you are free from desires mm. okay then we are in the meditative state one who one who is doing the activity without uh, phala sanga kartrutva tyagas uh, without mm. uh, the three i mean with with the phala sanga kartrutva tyaga mm. then one uh, attains the meditative state mm. state of meditation or one becomes successful uh, in attaining the state of meditation they are not influenced by the senses anymore so um so in shloka 42 lord krishna said senses of perception are said to be superior mind is superior to the senses intellect is superior to mind and desire is superior to intellect okay i mean in some interpretation uh, paramatma is superior to intellect was given but um, the true uh, translation is um 
it is uh, the desire that lord krishna was, is talking about at that place uh, so desire is superior to inter- intellect that means our intellect is under the influence of our desire so if our, if we have a desire we are doomed okay mm. <laughs> i mean the desire of uh, worldly things like uh, you know experiencing the worldly pleasures and uh, you know having possessions and things like that then our intellect goes in that direction because intellect the that desire is superior to intellect it drives the in, intellect 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 drives the mind mind drives the senses and senses act accordingly mm-hmm. um and in shloka uh, chapter 3 shloka 40 lord krishna said uh this desire covers the knowledge of the jiva that resides in the body okay in the, so in current shloka lord, um, lord krishna is saying in uh, chapter 18 shloka 49 one needs to be vigata spruha free from the craving of sensory pleasures see if i have the the craving it is going to influence my intellect my intellect influences mind mind influences the senses right so i should be free from the desires that those cravings are longing for uh, for the worldly things once uh, when i am vigata spruha then my mind uh, my intellect will be detached and my mind will be under control okay got it mm-hmm. yeah um and uh, so that is the first thing the second is one needs to be one needs to have conquered mind so when the mind is conquered mind controls the senses and does not let them run after sensory objects and mind is not affected by heat cold pleasure pain on our desire not like that so what happens if it is affected by them right we we tend towards uh, like if i if i am uh, affected by pleasure and pain that means i would i like the pleasure and i hate the pain so i want to do the activity to increase my chances of pleasure or to attain the pleasure and uh, to run away from the pain so i will do the activities uh, to uh, not get into the pain right so my my focus now shifted towards that whatever is giving me the pleasure and pain isn't it mm-hmm. so if i if my if i'm focused on honor dishonor so like uh, i give a speech and people are going to praise uh so i like that so then i'm i'm going to uh, do the activity for the sake of getting the praise right so and then uh, um i don't want uh, the dishonor so i i tend to uh, you know work towards okay i want to get praises so that's why i want to do this activity so i'm i'm, I'm changing my focus towards the worldly things just for the sake of uh, getting the honor um mm-hmm. heat and cold i do activities uh, that gives me whatever is a comfort right so mm-hmm. my and when i am uh, you know like i like pleasure but somehow the result is painful for me then i get affected by it i keep thinking about it now my focus is not on atma or parama my focus has become whatever activity that gave me pain or result that gave me pain right so if i am uh, criticized then i my focus shifts to, towards like you know that why this person criticizes me what is wrong with him <laughs> or her and uh, so uh, how can i take i mean in the worst case i will start thinking okay how can i take revenge right uh, so all my focus has shifted towards uh, addressing the uh, honor dishonor i lo- i la- i lose uh, focus on uh, atma that meditative state right so um so then uh, lord krishna said how this person who is free from desires who has an attached intellect and who has conquered the mind must perform karma yoga he has to perform sanyasena with renunciation okay lord krishna explained 
earlier in 18th chapter that sanyasa and tyaga are synonymous um and it does not mean giving up the works it means one must perform their own prescribed duty as tyaga that is of three kinds phalatyaga sangatyaga kartrutvatyaga phalatyaga is renunciation of the fruits of the works so, uh, so we have to give up the uh, fruits not the work itself or uh, give up the results to paramatma uh, sangatyaga give up the attachment to the work okay this is my work i am doing this my work you know that attachment should not be uh, this is paramatma's work okay uh, and he is enabling me to do it um, and kartrutvatyaga renunciation of the doership uh, you know i am doing it with my own abilities my own energy i am so great that's why i am doing it that is a thinking that we have we should give that up uh, it's paramatma is giving me the ability i'm just an instrument in doing the activity so if you have this three uh, tyagas you know phala sangha kartrutva tyaga and do our karma yoga okay and with the detached intellect conquered mind and with no desires for worldly act uh, worldly pleasures or sensory objects then we attain the meditation state if we do not if we do not have this then we will not attain meditation so um one who may think that oh i can simply go and sit somewhere and then do the meditation will be a midhyachara just a hypocrite because their mind is not under control their intellect is uh, their desires are not under control their intellect is uh, not uh, uh, detached so and they do the activities uh, with uh, attachment thinking that i am doing it these results are for me then uh, there is no point in doing the meditation i mean their meditation will not give the fruits the results that we are they uh, it doesn't put them on the right path right uh, so this is a next level actually so and um, when we do the uh, karma phala tyaga you know we do we perform karma yoga practice then we will reach a stage of uh, uh, meditation dhyana yoga okay so that's why lord krishna said perform the karma yoga the swadharma uh, always you should do don't give that up okay goal of gnana yoga is also the state of the state of meditation um however gnana yoga path leaving one's prescribed duties is difficult to pursue and is filled with dangers compared to karma yoga so lord krishna advised karma yoga as the preferred path for us both gnana yoga and karma yoga lead us to dhyana yoga meditation state we can meditate on atma we are always uh, focused on atma okay uh, however between the two karma yoga and gnana yoga karma yoga is uh, easy for us it is uh, natural for us it is not uh, filled with difficulties like uh, gnana yoga um, so uh, so it is preferred the uh, lord krishna said you perform your karma yoga okay so once we st- do uh, you know once we once we perform karma yoga um with the phala sankartrutva tyaga then uh, we are uh, we will be uh, reaching a state where our mind is under control um our desires are because we are doing it uh, with the uh, um uh, phala tyaga sangha tyaga so we we have we slowly get our desires under control okay desire is something i want right i mean if i'm doing it for parmatma then that i want is gone uh and uh, i am doing my duty that is karma yoga so whatever is the duty i will do it is not like i like it that's why i'm doing it or i hate it that's why i'm not doing it so liking hating is gone so all that if i am if i am performing karma yoga it is putting me on the path towards whatever is said in this so it will lead me to asakta buddhi uh, and it will lead me to jitatma becoming jitatma and uh, vigata spuha 
so then uh, i am uh, going to be in the state of uh, meditation the higher state okay where i can focus on atma so freedom from karma doesn't mean the uh, the karma is zero right i mean we will be doing some karma until we die yes. but with with these qualities we are free from those unnecessary things right i mean it'll be maybe we will be in a, yeah it is freedom yeah. from karma uh, um freedom from the need to perform any activities for the sake of our senses mm mm-hmm. we have to do our duty mm. right mm. i mean just because i uh, i like uh, uh, you know i like to eat uh, biryani today <laughs> mm-hmm. you know i'll start making biryani mm-hmm. let us say you know that uh, uh, that need is gone that, mm. you know i will i will eat i will make something and i'll eat it that need to perform any activity to satisfy my senses is gone mm. um so basically my focus will be on my duties and uh, you know focus on atma only that's it mm-hmm. so i i can eat uh, biryani i can eat regular rice i can eat chapati i can eat uh, something else uh, whatever it is but uh, it would not affect me in any way any of this will not affect me in any way because that is not my goal mm. so the focusing on that those sense objects uh will be gone right mm. so so i'm always in that meditative state i'm mm. uh, you know uh cooking something i'm in a meditative state i'm eating something i'm in a meditative state uh focused on atma i'm not thinking about my senses i'm not thinking about you know i like it don't like it i'm not thinking about uh, worldly desires okay. i'm always focused on uh, atma only may may i ask question sure uh, hi jayesh <laughs> narayana jayesh narayana um so in meditation atma i i wondered if maybe sometimes i'm disrupted by pictures in my head of things and i get distracted a little bit in meditation so if i'm silent what can i visualize or should i try not to even visualize anything um a good question so so basically when we are doing the meditation it is always uh, we need to visualize on paramatma an image of paramatma of course yeah so because uh, if you do not have any object of meditation uh then it is uh, our mind will wander all over the place so uh, you know sri swami ji has advised that we we meditate on the image of paramatma whatever image that you can think of whatever you like okay uh, that you want to always i mean a beautiful image that you can oh, this, this is a beautiful image because okay. when we are seeing something beautiful we don't want to you know move away from it right so you can imagine the beautiful paramatma in your in, in your you know mind and uh, and then do the meditation yeah i do do that and but then sometimes as i'm trying to focus i'll, I'll i notice my mind still yeah and then so uh, that that is a um, yes, yeah sometimes so, i'm okay and then other days i'm i am practicing the heat and the cold and i'm getting better at that okay so i i meditate in in a cooler room and then meditate if it, the weather is changing and there's a lot of change and with global warming i feel that there needs to be a steadiness in the mind with that a lot of people experience the the scientific um change when you're going from hot to cold and some and sometimes that does disturb the mind i've noticed in my auntie you know she 
there's an algorithm. I don't know if it's an algorithm. It's not that. It's your circadian rhythm. Um, when you're when the weather does change in a drastic way, it does affect the mind. And I'm trying to this in March. There's a lot of that going on, and I'm trying to become more focused to that in that yeah. way. Yeah, that is true, actually. I find I go back and forth. <laughs> yeah, so. Jai Shiva Narayan, uh, I think I have met you in the temple. Um, glad that you are able to join the Jai Shiva Narayan. Yes. Jai Shiva Narayan. So yeah. basically, you know, uh, I may just, uh, you know, uh, of course, we meditate on a regular basis. Couple of things here, what I experienced, I can, um, I can tell you. Uh, one way to start is uh, basically with the body awareness, right? When you start, when your mind is wandering, we can bring it back more easily when you bring your attention to your breath and your body and, you know, th and start from there. And, uh, you know, I know physical limitations. For example, I myself, uh, for most part of it's okay, but I cannot stand cold. It's very difficult for me. And uh, I cannot stand uh, hunger. For example, I can't fast for like, you know, the complete day. I, uh, can, I, can, fa I can do that now and I can <laughs> sit in cold. I can sit in cold. I'm, I'm proud yeah. of myself because I always used to be very cold. Yeah, but exactly. I'm, I'm better. I'm, I, you have to yeah. do it in a consistent. It's, yeah. I'm getting better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, to, uh, yes. So to cross even that, right, it's going to take some time. Uh, for example, to your point, as we um, go deeper and deeper into the consciousness of uh, Paramatma, and also it matters how much time we are spending, right? The more time we spend uh, in the temple and in the programs like this, those days maybe our meditation is better. So we have to create that atmosphere for ourselves. Um, then it gets better and better. That's what I think. Jai Shri Manarayana. Jai Shri Manarayana. Jai Shri Manarayana. Jai Shri Manarayana. <clears throat> okay. So, so, Lord Krishna is taking us from uh, the Karma Yoga now into the Dhyana Yoga mode, right? Um, so, we, we are going to the next level where we can do the meditation on Atma with, uh, without being affected by the, um, by the three gunas. Okay, so we move on to next, sorry, next. Next loka. Sloka 50. Siddhim prapto yatha brahma. Siddhim prapto yatha brahma. Tatha pnoti nibodhame. Tatha <laughs> So Lord Krishna is saying, Kamteya, Arjuna. Uh, uh, so he's going to explain something. So he's saying, Nibodhame, you know, listen from me. Um, Samasena. So he's going to explain something briefly. Okay. 
uh, what he's going to explain something briefly is um, yatha siddhim praptaha. So um, how one, at one attains perfection? Siddhi is perfection, praptaha is attained. So how, by what means or with what means one uh, praptaha is one who has attained perfection, one who has attained, you know. Uh, so, by uh, by what means one who has attained perfection uh, in reaching the meditative state, okay, um, how that person Tathapnoti. So, that person attains, okay, Nishta Jnanasya Yapara. Okay, so, so how that um, Tatha Brahma Apnoti. So, how that person who has attained perfection. Uh, in reaching the meditation state, how that person attains Brahma, the state of uh, Atma, the pure state of Atma. So this one, uh, you know, there are other uh, translations where it says, oh, uh, that person attains uh, uh, Paramatma. But uh, pure state of Atma is equivalent to Paramatma. So without going into the, that details. So basically, um, how that person attains Paramatma, I'm going to explain to you in briefly, okay? Um, yeah, which is Jnanasya Nishta Para, so which is a uh, um, supreme goal of knowledge. Jnanasya of knowledge, Nista is a goal or state or end of, um, I mean, so this particular state of pure state of um, Atma is the supreme goal of knowledge. Okay, let me uh, say again, which was, um, may not be clear. So, um, so what he's saying is that uh, listen from me briefly, okay? Um, how one attained, um, one who has attained perfection in meditation reaches the state of, uh, um, reaches the state of pure state of Atma, okay? So this is the next level now. So previously he said, first karma, do your karma, karma yoga. Okay, that is better than uh, Jnana Yoga. Then he said, next state is that from Karma Yoga, you will attain the state of meditation, Dhyana Yoga. So now he's saying, one who has attained the Siddhi, that one who has attained the Dhyana Yoga, how that person is going to get the um, state of pure state of Atma. Okay, um, so how that person attains pure state of Atma. Um, and what is that pure state of Atma is explaining is Nishta uh, Jnanasya Yapara, which is the supreme goal of knowledge. Okay. So, I mean, he's going to explain uh, uh, the next level of reaching uh, from the Dhyana Yoga, from that to reaching the actual, uh, the, the pure state of Atma or self-realization. Okay, how that person attains, he's going to explain now. Okay. Okay. Um, So just uh, look back at uh, some of the previous uh, chapters. 
So let us review different means that Lord Krishna gave us in chapter 12. Okay. Bhakti Yoga. In, uh, so he gave different means for liberation. Okay. In uh, chapter uh, 12, Sloka 2, Lord Krishna said, Those who fix their mind in me, desire to be ever united with me, and worship me with supreme faith, they are considered most superior by me. Okay. And then in uh, next slokas, he said, but those who meditate on Atma after restraining all the senses well, treating all beings with equal regard, uh, interested in the welfare of all beings, not wishing ill to any uh, creature or, um, or nature, they certainly reach me. So he said, one is, uh, you know, fixing their mind on me, desire to be united with me is one. The second is meditating on Atma. They also reach me, he said. Then those who meditate on Atma, whose mind is inclined to be to the indiscernible Atma, the trouble is very much greater. The embodied reach the Avyakta path with difficulty indeed. So it is taking the path of... Uh, um, Meditating on Atma is difficult, he said. Okay. So then he gave the next level down, which is um, after dedicating all activities to me, those who regard me as a supreme goal, meditate on me, worship me with exclusive devotion, with practice of Bhakti Yoga, whose minds are fixed in me, to them I speedily become mighty savior from the deadly ocean of samsara of recurring births and deaths. So dedicating all activities to me. So we have to do our activities. So, um, right? I mean, when we do uh, the activities as service to God, whatever activities that we are doing, uh, so we follow the karma yoga path. They also, I mean, supported by jnana yoga and the bhakti yoga, they will also attain me, he said. So purely meditating on atma is, uh, filled with difficulties. So, do your activities, but dedicate them to me, um, thinking of me as a goal. And I, mean, I am doing these activities for you. These are your activities for your sake. Okay? Um, and I am doing it as worship for you. Okay? So, like that, if we do, they will also uh, reach um, the state of Paramatma or reach the pure state of Atma. Okay. Um, so he is giving uh, different levels again. So first level is focus your mind on me alone. Enter buddhi in me. Only after, uh, only thereafter, you will live in me. There is no doubt. Okay. This is the highest level again. If now you are not able to fix your mind on me steadily, then seek to attain me by the repeated practice of remembrance, abhyasa. Even if you are incapable of repeated practice or repetition practice, become one who considers my works as supreme. Even doing works for my sake, you will attain me. You will, you will attain successes, you will attain me. Okay? If you are unable to do even this, then taking refuge in Bhakti Yoga, give up the fruits of all actions with a controlled mind. So, I mean, he's giving different uh, levels in the previous chapters. Now, here also is taking in the 18th chapter, first he said, okay, Karma Yoga, do your Karma Yoga, then you will reach a state of meditation. One who had attained the state of meditation, how they will attain the state of uh, pure state of Atma uh, is going to explain now. Right? So it's taking step by step again. Okay? So in the, based on the 12th chapter, right? So karma yoga with sannyasa is better than dhyana yoga meditation, which is better than nana yoga Okay, just uh, 
the knowledge and which is uh, better than abhyasa re repeated remembrance uh, right so that's what uh, he he said uh, but better doesn't mean that it is a shorter path right i mean it's not like okay everybody should give up uh, everything and then just start doing uh, karma yoga because it will lead us to uh, in the it's a shortest path then why did he even give other things right it better does not mean shorter path towards liberation it means it is better for us to practice the, you know and um, because you know with that we can avoid troubles uh, we would face if we are not fit to perform the other higher levels of yoga okay um, so i mean just to give a link between the 18th chapter and 12th chapter uh, basically it is consistent the message is consistent right so we will look at 51 52 53 they are linked together. Hope you will kind of complete them today. Right? So, the, so we go from Karma Yoga to Dhyana Yoga. Dhyana Yoga, we, uh, we do something. That's what he's going to explain. And then we will attain the state of uh, uh, Atma, Realization. Okay? Sloka 51. Buddhya Visuddhaya Yukto. Buddhya Visuddhaya Yukto. Dhrutyatmanam Niyam Yacha. Dhrutyatmanam Niyam Yacha. Sabda Deen Vishayan Tektva Sabda Deen Vishayan Tektva Ragad Veshav Yudasyacha Ragad Veshav Yudasyacha Let's chant together. Buddhya Vishayan Yukto Okay, so he is giving the so from the meditative, we are already in the meditative state now, you know, we. Uh, perfected karma yoga, reached a state where um, we have, um, you know, detached intellect, controlled mind, no desires, doing all activities with phala, sangha, katrutva, tyaga. Now we are, we are in this meditative state. In the meditative state, uh, so one, who, you know, from, so the next level, right? <clears throat> um, one who, uh, so, buddhya visuddhaya yuktaha. Okay, so one who is endowed with purified intellect. Okay, buddhya visuddhaya with pur purified intellect, yuktaha means having or, uh, uh, you know, one who is an endowed with this uh, uh, perfect intel uh, purified intellect. Okay, what is purified intellect? We'll see. Um, dhritya atmanam niyamya okay so um, after restraining niyamya after restraining the mind see again here atma is mind atmanam is of mind or um, right uh, after restraining uh, the mind dhritya with determination okay dhriti we, we learned right uh, in the previous lokas so after uh, uh, restraining the mind sabdadin vishayan tyaktva so uh, 
um, after giving up vishayan the the sense objects sabdadi sabda is sound so sabdadi so the uh, what are all the vishayas the sense objects uh, sound taste smell form and touch so after giving the sense giving up the sense objects ragadvesha yudasya so uh, casting off or getting rid of or abandoning raga dvesha raga is attachment um attraction desire and uh, dvesha is aversion so so now while in the meditative state this these are all the things one who has uh, so uh, one who has these characteristics what are the characteristics they have the purified intellect uh, restrained mind and they gave up the sense objects okay abandoning the attachment and aversion okay let us look at i mean he is continuing in uh, so the three shlokas 51 52 and 53 we'll see the other two also vivikta sevi laghvasi vivikta sevi laghvasi laghvasi yata vakaya manasah yata vakaya manasah dhyana yoga paro nityam dhyana yoga paro nityam vairagyam samupasritah vairagyam samupasritah let's chant together vivikasasi yata vakaya manasah Dhyana Yoga Paro Nityam Vairagyam Pashritaha Vivikta Sevi Vivikta Sevi is the one who lives in a secluded place. Um, okay. So secluded place for the purpose of meditation, right? so one who is uh, living in a secluded place conducive for meditation with no obstacles there are no obstacles for meditation such a place laghwasi is one who eats food in moderation okay these are all the characteristics of the one who is already in a meditative state and now they are uh, so they are on the path towards uh, achieving the pure state of atma so yata vakaya vak kaya manasah so one who controls speech body and mind okay again focusing them on meditation so one who is controlling uh, speech body and mind um niyat uh, so so dhyana yoga parah nityam okay so always oh this is a um, one who is engaged in dhyana yoga okay a uh, vairagyam samupasritah so vairagyam is dispassion uh, or detachment okay um samupasritah one who are abides in or who takes refuge in upasritah sam upasritah so one who is living in that detachment detachment towards everything that is not related to object of meditation okay so this is the the next set of uh, characteristics of the one is still talking about one who attains um the pure state of atma okay 
Let's look at the last one. Ahankaram balam darpam. Ahankaram balam darpam. Kamam krodham parigraham. Kamam krodham parigraham. Vimuchya nirmama santo. Vimuchya nirmama santo. Brahma bhuya ya kalpate. Ahankaram, Balam, Darpam, Kamam, Krodham, Parigraham, Vimuchya. Okay. So Vimuchya is after giving up. What uh, after giving up what? Uh, first is Ahankaram. Ahankaram is um, arrogance, pride, ego. Uh, that is coming from thinking that body is the self. Okay. I... I am body. This this is my. Uh, I mean, this is me showing the body, right? They don't. Uh, uh, one who has uh, this ahankaram is thinking that body is self. So, one who is in this state is vimuchya ahankaram. So they are giving up that ahankaram. So they are uh, not considering their body as self. Okay, they are considering them as different from the body. Balam is power. Okay, giving up the power. Uh, what uh, what is it? They are giving up power of vasanas from previous births. Okay, uh, so they are not influenced by the um, vasanas of the previous births. Okay, it's not like they they are giving. They want to become weak. No, <laughs> they they are. Uh, giving up something that is forcing them to do certain things, you know, because I have vasanas. For example, I have rajasic vasanas or tamasic vasanas. They're forcing me. They're, they're, they act on me. They're, uh, uh, the, you know, I'm uh, inclined to do those things. Now I am giving up those things. I'm giving up my rajasic and tamasic tendencies and I'm acquiring sattvic tendencies. I want to become pure sattvic. Okay. So, that is uh, giving up balam, giving up darpam. Darpam is uh, uh, that con conceit. Uh, I mean, I am great, right? That uh, the pride, being uh, feeling that proud. I am great. I am doing things uh, that are great. Everybody should uh, respect me, and that garvam. Telugu, it's called garvam. So that that darpam. Okay, uh, kamam is uh, desire that uh, all of you know. Krodham is anger. Parigraham, uh, covetousness. Uh, so excessive desire for possessing, desire uh, for possession of sense objects. Parigraham, you know, I want to have all these things. That uh, desire. Okay. Uh, Nirmamaha. So, so giving up all these things. Okay. Nirmamaha is uh, one who is free from selfishness. Mama, you, you know, Nirmama is not having mama, mamakara. So, mamakara is having that uh, uh, selfish. Okay. Nirmama is free from selfishness or sense, uh, free from sense of possession. Uh, then Santaha, one who enjoys peace, um, serenity, bliss from the experience of Atma. Santa is peace. I mean, we all know that. But 
one who is uh, getting that peace or the tranquil serenity bliss all these are synonyms one who is uh, satisfied satisfied is a lower word but uh, one who is uh, getting that bliss happiness from the experience of atma alone not from uh, you know all these sensory pleasures um so they are they are able they are enjoying that and you know that uh, peace of uh, experiencing the atma brahma bhuyaya kalpate so that person that one is fit for the state of brahma that is realizing the true nature of atma okay so let us uh, quickly look at uh, the there are 16 total i counted so endowed with a purified intellect so what is purified intellect it is supported by the knowledge of atma meditate on atma intellect means judgment ability right so they choose liberation over bondage uh discern the means for liberation so what are, uh, like what are all the means for liberation i i will know okay i am able to distinguish the means for liberation from anything else so so that i i will be moving i mean uh, my intellect will drive me towards liberation understand what needs to be done so once i un- uh, determine the means and and my uh intellect uh, will drive me towards what needs to be done like it is able to determine oh this uh, this should be done this should not be done like that uh have judgment that is not uh, covered by worldly desires as i said right desires will sit on top of the um top of uh, intellect if if it uh, sits on top of intellect we are doomed so our judgment will be driven by the desires now here purified intellect means uh, we are not having the desires it is not covered by the intellect which is not covered by the desires um uh, and know what removes fear uh, and what causes fear following the scriptures will remove the fear not following scriptures will cause the fear so basically having purified intellect means i need to study scriptures i need to follow scriptures um and uh, if one doesn't have purified intellect they will not have that clear idea you know they will be doing uh something whatever they think is right for them right so so one is so purified having purified intellect restraining manas with determination so with this intellect purified intellect control the manas to focus on uh um uh, focus on the goal to achieve self realization so now if i intellect is uh, purified intellect is stronger compared to my manas it restrains the manas with the determination what is that so i have a single goal uh, determination to achieve that goal is uh, in spite of difficulties so the difficulties is like now it's not like it is hard to do the difficulties or sense objects are like uh, a crocodile under in the water right it is so powerful so when a sense object is sorry when a sense organ nanendriya is in the in this world in this prakriti uh, which is experiencing those sense objects our senses become so powerful okay they are difficult to control so have the determination in spite of difficulties i am going to win over the senses my my mind is going to control the sense senses okay so my mind is not going to be affected by the senses um so give um, give up sense objects we, we saw that so with restrained manas okay turn away the sense objects and do not run after sensory pleasures okay cast of attraction and aversion uh so what causes attraction and aversion is our sensory experiences they lead to attraction attachment desires 
or aversion or hatred of sense object so when i experience something either i am liking it or disliking it or i am uh, getting attached to it i am hating it uh, you know uh, right so uh, i want to have it more or i don't want to have it at all so that that attraction and aversion is getting generated when uh, uh, my sense uh, you know sen- from the sensory experiences so abandon those dualities caused by the sense object so one who has abandoned those sensory um i mean uh, those attractions and aversions treating everything as equal right not affected by them uh live in secluded place conducive for meditation be away from all disturbances obstacles to med- meditation eats food in moderation free from eating too much or too less control speech body and mind not running after worldly temptations so the, uh, and then focusing them on the meditation itself right so i control my body speech and mind not not to run after worldly temptations engaging in dhyana yoga meditating every day constantly till death so one who is in the state of meditation now they are you know they are uh, one of the characteristics is that they are engaged in in uh, dhyana yoga uh, abides in dispassion or detachment okay that is not related to object of meditation thinking about their imperfections like why would uh, why would somebody be not attached to something right i mean when we think about their imperfections then we will say this is not for me right it is going to lead me into trouble say why would somebody not uh, say uh, drink alcohol is okay it will make me do things that i don't want to do it will uh, destroy my health so i know that those are the imperfections of drinking alcohol so then i will not do it same way these worldly pleasures also you know they may you know they may appear fine for other people but we know the imperfections the imperfections are that it is going to bind me in this world it will take me away from paramatma uh, so when when i know that imperfection i'll be away from it i'll be detached from it okay so uh, abides in that or lives in that uh, detachment so i'm not going out of it okay i'm always uh, detached um gives up ahankara um that ego pride arrogance that is developed with thinking that body is a self i mean we look at our body and say how great it looks right i mean uh, i'm i'm born in this kind of uh, you know family uh whatever uh, status in the society you know i'm living uh, i'm i'm having this much power politically or economically i'm having lot of power i am rich you know all these things are uh, the ahankara the it is uh, the pride arrogance that it is going to give give me because i am only looking at the body and uh, its greatness okay so giving up that ahankara then gives up balam uh, or uh, power recognizing and overcoming the influence of uh, the tendencies the vasanas created by previous karmas all right so uh, i get tempt- temptation to do certain things i will overcome that okay so that is giving up that power of those vasanas uh, giving up darpam uh, think uh, giving up the thinking that i am great my ideas are great i am doing great uh, now that uh, that garvam that uh, conceit uh gives up desire and anger this is a little bit more explanation giving up desires for sensory pleasures and anger realizing that they are our enemy so they are our real enemy not uh, uh outside so our real enemies are uh, desire and anger um so lord krishna said you know a few shlokas that refer to desire and anger right um, 
So, um, chapter 3, Sloka 37, he said, desire and anger are born of rajas quality. Desires for sense gratification are insatiable. They can never be satisfied, fully satisfied. When desires are not fulfilled, or we fear that they will not be fulfilled, then it turns into anger. Anger is the cause of great sin as it leads one to make bad choices and then do any, do something based on those bad choices, you know, things that we would not have done otherwise, right? So that is why uh, the desire. So primary cause of anger is also desire. So the desire is the enemy. That is the one that uh, we need to um, give up. Senses, mind and intellect are the means for desire. I mean, our desires reside in senses, mind and intellect. Our sense, senses want something. Our mind has desire like I want praise or I want honor, or I want uh, uh, you know, pleasure, um, you know, all that. That is a mind. Uh, and then intellect is getting attached to, to that. Okay, so the, this is where the desire re resides in. Um, the, this, this desire covers the knowledge of the Atma. That is the root cause of our problems. And our Atma, in its pure form, it has the uh, knowledge equivalent to Paramatma. But unfortunately, the desires sit on the uh, and uh, uh, influence the intellect and you know, take us in a different direction, we are not able to uh, see that knowledge, right? So the, the knowledge is covered by the desire. So destroy, uh, desires, uh, they destroy the knowledge. Desire is superior compared to intellect. Intellect is superior to mind. Mind is superior to senses. We saw that little earlier. And uh, realizing that desire is stronger than intellect, desire the enemy in enemy in the form of desire, destroy sorry, destroy the enemy in the form of desire with purified intellect, mind, and senses. So this is what Lord Krishna presented in uh, chapter three, which is again coming in chapter eighteen. Um, so gives up desire and anger now. If one does, did not follow the karma yoga, they are not at this step. They can never give up the desire and anger. So that's why we, we have to go from step, step by step, right? Uh, ones who, who, who actually performed karma yoga, they came over their uh, desire and anger. Uh, and then they reached a higher state, right? So uh, gives up covetousness, you know, excessive desire for possession of sense objects and uh, gives up mamakara, freedom, free from thinking that things belong to oneself, though they do not belong. I mean, uh, uh, oh, this is mine. This house is mine. This land is mine. This, uh, uh, you know, building is mine. This uh, job is, I mean, everything. We think this is mine, mine, mine. That thing is mine this world everything belongs to paramatma this uh, bank balance is mine this money is mine i earned it you know so all this is uh, uh, the mamakara uh, that is causing uh, you know my job my work my results my my money my family my uh, properties so that give up that you know once who uh, uh, in this state uh, who are uh, um, who are in the meditative state and who gives up the you know this uh, mamakara and uh, one who enjoys serenity, one who enjoys that pure state of atma. There is nothing that gives them enjoyment except for the pure state of atma. When one is characterized by these, whatever we discussed, sixteen things, and practices. Dhyana Yoga, I mean, that's one of the things that we uh, did uh, mentioned. They become fit to realize the true state, true nature of Atma.
Any questions? There's a lot of uh, material we covered. <laughs> this is excellent, and it, it like uh, bringing you know knowledge and memory from every chapter almost. <laughs> the Yoga. Giving a balam is little con confusing for me. Uh, yeah, it is. It is right. Um, so giving up a balam is uh, again with Acharya's blessings uh, interpretation is that the, uh, the giving up the influence of those uh, vasanas cre created by previous karmas. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Giving up Balam, uh, let us uh, look at it. I mean, Balam is a power. You know, I have, you know, a lot of physical strength. Okay. Mm. I mean, how is giving up physical strength uh, has anything to do with uh, gaining Atma knowledge? I mean, uh, taking us towards the pure state of Atma. Okay. Yeah. So one would say, oh, now, giving up your balam means you are uh, basically you are thinking that this balam is not mine. This balam belongs to Paramatma. Okay, mm -hmm. that is that is one one way you can one imagine. way of understanding. Yeah. So whatever I have, my you know whatever abilities that I have, uh, is belonging to Paramatma. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, it is also covered by giving up hankara that I, mine, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, uh, Ankara is, see, uh, uh, this is my uh, my body, you know, that mine is coming there also, right? Uh, uh, my, my power, you know, this is my ability, mm -hmm. you know, I'm doing it. So everything is, it is mine, okay? So associating that uh, whatever ability that we have, to us, again, the darpam is also like if I have a lot of power, okay, then it leads me to darpam, uh, that is uh, that the feeling of pride, that oh, I am great, right? I am powerful, mm -hmm. okay? So now give up that, he's saying. So there is, uh, if we are thinking that, okay, giving up the... Uh, association of whatever abilities that we have to ourselves okay mm. that is one one interpretation mm. so uh, that is covered by giving up ahankara giving up darpam giving up balam also if you are treating only balam separately and everything else goes into either ahankara or darpam but uh, our acharyas have also given that uh, the whatever uh, vasanas are forcing us to do Right, that is also a power within us. We don't have like control. bad tenen tendencies. I mean, we, we we have both, right? Good and bad. Good and bad. So, giving up the influence of those tendencies, overcoming those influences, overcoming or or giving up that power of those in uh, vasanas. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, I feel like I want to hurt somebody, let us say. Mm. It's so powerful, that feeling, okay, that mm. I want to hurt somebody. Mm. Give that up. Mm. It is coming from your vasanas, mm. yeah, from the previous karmas. Okay. So <laughs> don't get under the influence of the vasanas. So one is uh, uh, the actual abilities, you know, you know, maybe whatever good abilities you're talking about, like, uh, you know, any ability that you have, feeling that this is my ability, I, I am great. You give that up. And anything that is uh, uh, coming because of the vasanas, uh, also give it up. Mm. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, I mean, this is very difficult. Uh, you know, giving up the vasanas is uh, one of the things that is very difficult to really mm -hmm. practice right. uh, so <clears throat> it is uh, uh, possible to give it up right um, mm -hmm. so we we can always become sattvic no
no matter what mm-hmm. our previous uh, you know vasanas are so mm-hmm. we can uh, we, we are carrying the ten, uh, neurologic tendencies or uh, tamasic tendencies with us we can always become sattvic by you know taking sattvic food uh, surrounding ourselves with sattvic sattvic environment so uh, studying scriptures getting more knowledge mm-hmm. right so having the sattvic knowledge actually the there are uh, lord krishna covered uh, under sattvic he covered sattvic knowledge sattvic work sattvic worker sattvic uh, buddhi that is uh, sattvic intellect sattvic dhruti sattvic determination and uh, sattvic happiness so uh, if we focus on this uh, sattvic and so of course sattvic food we cover sattvic yajna so sattvic dhanam sattvic tapas so all these he he covered so once we uh, uh, practice everything that is in the sattu column <laughs> uh, then uh, we are uh, controlling our uh, rajasik and tamasik tendencies that we may be carrying with us in the previous lives from the previous lives mm mm-hmm. yeah any uh, any questions on this at least we will know where we are by the <laughs> <laughs> how far it is very difficult to ever i know <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah but th- uh, these days but- uh, you know we are realizing very fast that even though uh i'm not of course i'm not there yet but uh, after you know anger or something immediately we are realizing earlier that was bit a difficult thing so yeah, at least we are trying you know trying yeah yeah i think yeah. bhagwan said yeah. it's the first step you know in millions of people only a few thousands may try mm, <laughs> one not even one <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely i mean if you look at uh, in general if you observe outside Mm. you meet 100 people probably it's hard to find even one person mm. who is truly focused right yeah. yeah and we have how many people probably in the world 8 billion people mm. uh, <laughs> so yeah i think we are very fortunate to uh, be in satsang and get this knowledge extremely fortunate okay uh, we'll cover one more shloka it's very uh, small one uh, it is okay surrender yeah shloka 54 brahma bhuta prasannatma brahma bhuta prasannatma न सोचति न कांक्षति न सोचति न कांक्षति समस्सर्वेशु भूतेशु समस्सर्वेशु भूतेशु मद्भक्तिं लभते परां मद्भक्तिं लभते परां क्वेश्चन टुगेदर going to the next level now, Lord Krishna. taking us slowly one step at a time um so brahma bhutaha so i mean wherever it says aha like that it is uh, subject you know uh, talking about the subject uh, so the person here so brahma bhutaha 
is uh, one who realized Brahma. Okay, so Brahma is the true nature of Atma. So one who realized the uh, true uh, nature of Atma, Prasannatma, is one whose mind is unperturbed, one undisturbed. Okay, perturbed, perturbed, undisturbed by the pains caused by the karma. So I'm doing the action. I'm getting the pain, some pain, but my mind is not disturbed. Always, in, uh, you know, my focus is on Paramatma and focus is on Atma. I'm enjoying that, uh, that experience because I am, I am realized now. Whatever activities I'm doing, I'm not being disturbed by them at all. Okay? I'm at a mental peace. I'm uh, getting peace from uh, the experience of Atma. Okay? Na so chati, na kangshati. Neither grieves nor desires. Okay? Neither grieves for anything other than Atma, nor desires anything other, uh, other than Atma. So, something that is... Uh, uh, last materialistic thing does not give me any, any uh, grief. I mean, uh, so it doesn't affect me at the Atma level. Okay. So there's something that uh, we need to see. Somebody gets hurt or something that is painful for the body. Maybe it is, uh, or someone is lost. Uh, so it, it hurts. Uh, at the body level only, they're not uh, their mental peace is not disturbed by it. That is what we need to understand here. So neither grieves nor desires nor uh, craves for anything other than Atma. So now their only uh, focus is uh, Atma, Paramatma. Okay, um, they do not desire anything uh, to you know you know acquire more materialistic things. Samas Sarveshu Bhuteshu. So they see uh, equal in all beings. Okay. For them, Madhbhaktim uh, Labhate Param. Uh, they, you know, one who has, you know, not them, like it's plural, it's not plural, singular, uh, not Krishna is talking about, one who has realized true nature of Atma, one whose mind is not disturbed by the activities that they're doing, the results they're getting, uh, you know, the, the karmic bondage, whatever they have is not disturbing them. Uh, they're, they're one who is uh, not grieving, not desiring, um, anything materialistic, anything that is other than the um, uh, Atma Paramatma uh, and sees everything equally in all beings. Okay? All beings are equal. Paramatma is superior. That's what it is. Parama, it's, uh, Paramatma is always superior. Purushottama. Every other being is equal. Okay, so that is what they see. That one, Labhate, uh, so that one attains, obtains Param, param Madhbhaktim, supreme devotion for me. So now is uh, taking us into the devotion step. So, um, Right, we uh, we will uh, be able to, I uh, mean, reach that state when we go through all these. Of course, we are praying to Paramatma, it's great, uh, but uh, <clears throat> that supreme devotion is when we are we are transcending above uh, all these other things like, you know, desires, um, grieving. Crying and you know, not seeing you know, all beings equally. I mean, we are in this. If we are in this state of uh, you know, not in this state, then we are not in that supreme devotion state. 
okay okay we are we may be praying but we are not in the supreme devotion for paramatma um uh, right so we'll continue this i mean this will continue so Uh, the key here is that we should not be disturbed by the our activities mind is not disturbed and uh, always you know realize the true nature of our one of course we are not there yet I mean, at least i'm not there yet uh, and then uh, do not grieve or lament for something that is other than paramatma all these materialistic things do not desire for desire or crave for anything that is materialistic other than paramatma then uh, seeing everybody as equal uh, but subservient to paramatma paramatma superior i do not have any um uh bias no i these people are great these people are not great i mean so the, uh, this this is great that is not great no bias at all every everything is equal all beings as equal everything is pervaded by paramatma but all of them are not equal to paramatma this paramatma that is superior to, uh, to uh, all these beings that one attains to uh, devotion for me supreme devotion for me any questions on this So we are about twenty-five, uh, I think. We have to uh, seventy-eight, twenty-four more slokas to go in this chapter. <laughs> All right, uh, and then with the God's grace, Acharya's grace, we will complete. Thank you so much <laughs> for everything. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, we'll uh, we'll conclude the concluding prayer. Namaha Manasendriya. Karo Thank you all. Thank you.